Gentlemen, I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something distinctly satisfying about driving a hardened steel tool through a pristine piece of plate steel. Even a scabby old piece of steel for that matter. Hi guys, I wanted to show you what a $25,000 mistake looked like. All the finite element analysis in the world and lab testing is no replacement for actual field work. This is a highly engineered, super duper steel alloy tool and it's a, a percussive tool used in the mining industry and uh, after testing it, it lasted about 10 seconds if that before it shattered into a million pieces so I was told to disappear this with extreme prejudice so that I did right into my scrap bin and I remembered it because I've been messing of course with the little screwy here the hundred ton press and I've been looking for stuff to make uh, punch dies out of so here we go that's a big nice hex and there's a big nice die made from the best steel on earth their losses are gain so I cut those big slugs of hardened tool steel uh, down with the zip cut now I got it in the lathe the little boxford lathe and this is these are basically file hard the file won't even touch them now when I bought this lathe I, I made the mistake of rushing out and spending a whole bunch of money on carbide tooling which a small lathe's really you don't need them because they don't have enough feed pressure to actually take advantage of uh, carbide tooling they're great for machining hardened steel so even with my little boxford lathe because i've got this carbide tooling i've been able to machine hardened tool steel you can see the chips coming off there nice and blue and yeah this i'm i'm blown away that that's actually working and i'm really surprised because i had written off all this carbide tooling as a total waste but apparently it's not So there we have it, we ended up with a beautiful face on a press die, considering we started out with a gnarly zip cut face and we had to take off about a quarter inch. I'm pleased as punch at that. Uh, I want to deburr it a titty bit, but the deburring tool won't even touch it, so I'm going to hit it with the emery cloth. Not quite sure how big this even is, I haven't measured it yet, so let's uh have a peek at her. That's over an inch. Maybe metric. There we go. 30 millimeter hex. <laughs> 30 and a half. That's pretty big. Uh, yeah, I got these uh, calipers here. It's got no thumb wheel. They're cheapo four inch. Uh, got them from Harbor Freight. And they, <clears throat> they're kind of a pain in the ass because there's no thumb wheel. Every once in a while you just got to get them at a little adjustment. Yeah. Oh, much better. I got the zip cut chunk of punch die here, and it's going to be a double ender depending on which flavor you prefer, hex or round. I'm going to chuck that up in the old Boxford lathe and face it off. Now, I'm not a machinist by any stretch of the imagination, 
but these Grizzly indexable uh, tool holders are I really like them. Um, I have bought the super super cheap ones before uh, bigger size for a monster lathe and they sucked ass so in comparison these are these are good uh, now I don't know how they stack up against something like a Sandvik or a Ingersoll Rand or but I like them definitely good enough for the girls I go out with so the final pass really did the trick real nice and now we gotta chuck the hexagonal side is that hex yeah hex is six oct is eight so hexagonal and six divided by three is two so it will fit in the three draw chuck now because this is real hard tool steel I had to cut this with the zip cut consequently it looks like uh, it got gnawed at by a dull beaver so I'm being real conservative when I start this cut because there's all sorts of chowder on there and interrupted cuts real hard on the insert but they do make these inserts in factories every day so what the hell let her buck I've been a little bit remiss these past few days I haven't even come close to my my recommended daily allowance of sulfury hydrocarbon smoke so we're gonna put a little astroglide on there just to see if we can get the smoke show going well that ain't teabag a little touch with your emery cloth and Bob's your uncle and I'm going to do some more welding because I can now we have the ultimate trial for little screwy 30 millimeter hex die through half inch plate steel doing a little cheating on this one got the corners of the nuts marked off so we're gonna give her a sixth of a turn each time we got her snug nut now we're gonna put it sideways in the vise so we stay out of the line of fire safety third we get the die lined up now we're just gonna lift the top plate up sacrificial piece of plate steel in there so now we'll just snug down the bolts turn it sideways so we don't catch summer teeth when it explodes we got to matter we got to measure it up to make sure each corner is equidistant and then now we can set it in the vise sideways and we'll just run this each rod uh, six of a turn well that is a nasty bit of bull work turning all these screws but uh, it just got easier so we're through there now Whew. an hour two feet a day oh man I'm gonna sell this thing to uh, gyms that was a lot of work anyway I gotta go get me a Guinness and I'll be back holy now that was a nasty bit of bulwark I ain't no milk toast but my lats and forearms are on fire So I don't often work out, but when I do, my recovery routine includes Guinness. You drink this stuff, it'll put hair on your chest. If you got hair on your chest, it'll move it towards your shoulders and back. So there's the 30 millimeter hex die, and it's in great shape, or punch. And there's the die, great shape. There's the slug, I punched out through sheer force of will. And there's a nice hole it made.
Now I made this tool a double ender for a reason. On with the show.